afternoon, my turtle ducks. Thank you so much for joining me. Last time, we talked about what food should and what food doesn't need to be kept in the refrigerator. This time, let's talk a little about keeping it tidy. As with all things, this schedule is just a suggestion. You may find yourself needing to do things with more or less frequency, depending on the size of your household and the energy you have to devote to the tasks. But to start, I think it's a good idea to go through your refrigerator at least once a week or the day before waste management comes to collect and look for open drinks that you are unlikely to return to, food that will not be eaten, and sometimes just trash. Perhaps a condiment bottle you had hoped could be coaxed to give just a bit more, but really was empty. Remove these items. If they are in reusable containers, empty and rinse them. If not, discard them. This will help the refrigerator keep from getting too cluttered to see something you might actually want. It's also a good idea to wipe down the outside, at least the front and sides. It doesn't need to be much. A hot soapy cloth or a bit of sanitizing solution to keep large particles or spills from building up. Once a month, you may decide to go a bit more in depth. Go through your condiments and get rid of any that are empty or that you simply don't use. I know I have been very hopeful buying a new brand or recipe of condiment only to be bitterly disappointed. Don't let these take up space. If you want to keep the jars or bottles because they are nice or a fun shape, empty and rinse them. Otherwise, just throw them away. Check your food. Fruits and vegetables past where you or your family would eat them should be tossed. Preferably to compost, but if you haven't got access to one, the trash. Check leftover food. If you can't remember how long it's been there, or it looks or smells suspicious, toss it out. It isn't worth getting sick over. Check your drinks as well. Again, sight and smell. Disregard the best by date if they seem even a little off. It's not worth food poisoning. If you aren't sure, look up what may be signs for that particular thing going off and always err on the side of caution. I don't know about you, but generally after a purge, I have a lot more space. So it's a good time to go ahead and wipe down the shelves and drawers. This will also help keep the scent of your fridge neutral and help keep absorbent foods tasting like themselves rather than everything else. If you have the energy, try to also clean under and behind your fridge. If it's too heavy to safely move by yourself, don't. Never risk your health for a little extra clean. Either have someone do it for you or just try to make sure as little gets under there as possible. Now sometimes we lose power. It is simply the nature of the fragile ecosystem we have created around ourselves. The important thing is to know what to do. First, response is better than reaction. And to respond, we need to be prepared. Try to keep ice packs or water bottles in your freezer. If the power goes out, place a few in your fridge to help keep the temperature down. Most modern freezers and fridges will have a thermostat. If yours doesn't, or if it's digital, consider getting an analog thermometer. If your refrigerator temperature rises above 40 degrees Fahrenheit, consider most of the food in there inedible unless it's only in there because you prefer it cold, such as bread and some condiments. Try to open your fridge as little as possible while the power is out. Only go in if you know what you want. The same should be applied to your freezer. Only open it if you know exactly what you want if the thermostat reads higher than 32 degrees Fahrenheit, consider your freezer to now be a fridge with food thawing. If it reaches over 40 degrees Fahrenheit, consider the food spoiled. Let us assume the power is back, or perhaps you've simply had to move your fridge from one outlet to the other. Either way, the power has been interrupted, but it's now returned. Some refrigerators have a defrost cycle that can be initiated by a power surge or power interruption. Check your model to be sure. You may need to unload the contents of your fridge or freezer into a cooler while your fridge resets its temperature. Perhaps your power has not gone out. Maybe it's much more exciting and you've gotten a new refrigerator. Excellent. Now before loading it up with goodies, you'll want to bring the internal temperature down. 
You can still speed this along by putting ice packs or frozen water bottles inside, but refrain from putting anything that needs to be kept cold or anything already warm that you want cooled until the fridge has had time to cool down. That's it for today. I think I'll go have a nice cup of tea. Why don't you take a break as well? If you have any further questions, feel free to leave them below or send me a telonym. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, be kind, my turtle ducks, to each other and to yourselves.